Heinz? Yeah. yeah. It's Umberto. So, so wonderful to see each other again today. Exactly. <laughs> this is what I also said, that they give us a chance to talk and to continue our conversation yesterday. Mm -hmm. Some people who listened to what we were talking were, of course, very impressed with some of the points you were making. One of the points which was most intriguing was the one which I cited from one of your books, namely, the world in which we live is not external from us is not independent from us. It is a world we construct, we create, mm -hmm. by our experiences and by our interactions. The question which, of course, arose in these people is, this is a very profound shift of the notion that we are just watching to an existent world. What is the significance of this shift of position for education? I think that uh, the most uh, significant uh, consequence for education is that uh, it turns to look back to what happens in the teacher-student relationship. Yeah. Because what will happen is that education will not be so much concerned in the idea, in the, in the understanding, ab about the knowledge of an independent world, but about what is happening in the relationship between the students and the teacher. Yeah. Mm? What will happen between them? How, how yeah. will their interactions go? And because if the world that we live arises in the interplay of our living together, then which way do we live together so that the world that arises is one that we like to live mm -hmm. in? Yeah. My observation regarding this point is, I have the feeling that people become more interested now in learning instead of teaching. You remember about 20 or 30 years ago, you have institutions in the university who were teaching you the teaching, but mm. nobody was looking at what's going on in learning. And suddenly there's a shift in the interest is what takes place when children learn. And uh, my feeling is this position of discover or invent is a very important shift because if you discover, you have already a world there. Yeah. But if you invent, then you are creatively act active in producing the universe which you like to, in which you like to live. Yes. So I think it's a stimulant for the children to co-invent with their teachers the mathematics, the geography, the world, or something like that in which they want to live. And they will have fabulous cooperative games amongst the children when they are allowed to do things by themselves. Yes, yes, and that would be the, the main shift. But that inventing of the world together should occur in a rather innocent manner, yeah. without necessarily speaking about that we are inventing the world or that there is no independent world from us because one lives as if it there were one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think that the central thing would be the awareness that the children will be transformed in living together with their teachers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the question would be, how do I behave as a teacher mm -hmm. such that in the transformation of the children by living with me, a world arises which is present to live in, yeah. and in which these children, of course, acquire the abilities to do certain things. Yeah could be mathematics, biology, yeah. geography, or whatever it is. I think the main shift for a teacher who is looking the way in which you were talking about the world is that he doesn't enter the class with saying, I know everything, I have to tell you what I know, and you have to learn what I know. Instead of, I know nothing, let's find out what's going on. An invitation to search, an invitation to create, an invitation to participate, in a game which constructs a universe in which they all want to, want to live. It is not so to say, as it was thought before, knowledge being transferred from one brain to another. Uh, the, the brain who knows everything, the brain who knows nothing. Yeah? But in a common participatory game where both parties, whether it's the teacher, whether it's the student, learn together about whatever they create during their learning procedure. So the students will learn by living with the teacher to do with the teacher the way the teacher does things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So there was this wonderful man by the name of Gordon Pass, this crazy British educator. Mm. Oh, we said the teacher has to be a learner and the students have to be teacher. Now what are the students to teach? The students have to teach the teacher who they are. And the teacher has to teach the student what he is and he has to learn from them who they are so that they can really develop a real dialogue and not a one-way monologue teacher on one side students with all the ears open on the other hand. Hmm. And how does this relate with what we were talking yesterday about science? It relates to science because if you assume that science is already nothing else but finding the truth regarding how the universe is, and this is my suspicion, that it is essentially that you support the notion of truth and therefore you have an outside, external universe, independent from us, where any utterance is then compared with what the world really is. But if the doubt, as the skeptics already pointed out, whether we ever can know how the world really is, the question what science could be if you don't establish the truth regarding any observation you have made regarding the universe. Yeah, but the central thing there in, in science would be that you practice reflection. You practice uh, this possibility of looking and asking questions about what you are saying, whether it is valid or not. Yeah. So the children could learn that too, and in this way acquire this ability to be aware of what they are doing in the world they are bringing together with the teachers. Absolutely. I think this is a very essential step that the children are aware of what they are doing and also know that what they are doing is not necessarily always to confirm to a pre-set series of truth, but that they can develop notions which are not yet there. I remember this lovely uh, distinction Herbert Brun, our friend from the University of Illinois mm -hmm. made, on distinguishing two kinds of questions, the legitimate question and the illegitimate question. He called the legitimate question those for which the answer is not yet known. And the illegitimate question is the question for which the answer is already known. That means if I ask you something of which I know the answer, there's a very unfair way of asking questions because you assume I may not know it and therefore would support me with an answer. But if I ask a question where I think I know the answer, then it is a trap and not a question. And the notion is, can we build a school system in which only, illegit in only legitimate, legitimate questions are asked and a question for which an answer is not yet there, instead of the so-called illegitimate question where the teacher knows already the answer and the poor kids have to find out what, what kind of answer he knows. And what if I want to teach uh, multiplication? Yeah. Now, if I know multiplication, I know already yeah that two times two equals four. Now, how am I going to ask a child how much is two times two? You uh, let them invent a number system in which that will be a consequence. That means the whole thing is based on our notion of number, let's say here in this case whole numbers. If a s rule, how whole numbers are created from each other is being evolved, then two times two is a consequence of that set of rules. It is not that you come in with a multiplication rule. You invent a number system in which then the multiplication rules are consequences. So my teaching of math would be, let's invent numbers. I see. But you already have a, a broad uh, history no, of reflection uh, with numbers. No, they are, I just have one per perception of one set of numbers which might come uh, to be evolved in such a class which invents numbers. You see, the point is, if you are inventing numbers, it must be not necessarily 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It can be numbers A, B, C, D, E, F, G, uh, whatever. Uh, so you now create relations between these A, B, Cs and establish these and say, henceforth, if I come with a B, a C should follow only if and you add an A or whatever, I'm mm -hmm. inventing these things. If you get this idea going, then you might come with certain things which are called not A, B, C, D, E, they're called 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then you establish a relation between 2 and 3. And the relation is very interesting. 3 
in the game is then a follower of two, and the follower is always generated by adding one. Okay, so uh, something of that. Right? Yes, I mean, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Of course, I understand. So the, the question would be to create an interaction with the students that will give rise to the generative process of different kinds of quotes knowledge. Yeah. And this well, generative. Let's call it rules of a game. Rules of the game, but these yeah. rules of the game is can you consider it as knowledge? Yeah. It's considered as knowledge, and they are related in some way, at least in some of the activities that they may develop, to daily life. In the case of numbers, I mean, yeah. for a while they may not. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. But in yeah. some moment they have to go to buy potatoes. Yeah. Yeah. So a relation mm -hmm. should arise, or yeah. maybe they already have been buying potatoes. Mm -hmm and the relation will arise with the way they buy potatoes and this uh, number system that they have developed. And my idea is that you, you develop a game which is called the buy and potato game. Ah, but I as a teacher has to lead this. Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay, of course. okay. Yeah. So, yeah. so the teacher... We are now inventing a game called buying potatoes. Okay, well, but this, I think this yeah. is an important thing because yeah, no, the teacher must be prepared for this yeah, matter. Yeah. Clearly. Yeah, so must have uh, the possibility of having a, a broader domain of reflections Absol than the one is going to evoke absolutely. in the children. This is very important. Yeah. The task for the teachers in this position I'm taking, and I believe you too, is much, much larger than the demands of the teacher in the earlier educational uh, system. Hmm. Because in the earlier education system, he may now learn rules of the game by heart. And now he has to be ready to evolve rules of games with young people who might come up with ideas he never thought about it, and of which he has to give the green light, although he doesn't understand them yet at all. Mm -hmm. You know how ingenious children are. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. It is fascinating if you allow, allow them to do their own thing. Yeah. And what about uh, the relation? the way the teacher relates with, to the student. Is, is this of a significant... It's a, co, it's a, it's a, a co-player. A co-player? Yeah. We are all playing. We are playing a game. Yeah, but when you are a co-player, you must have a very loving relation with your fellow uh, players. Absolutely clear, sure. And how do you do that? Uh, this is, if he selected himself, becoming a teacher, hmm? then this is, I would consider, a prerequisite for, for his desire of becoming a teacher. And in his training. Yeah. In his training as a teacher. Yeah. Mm. I have a... Um, of course, this is a utopian point of looking at it, but pretty clear to me. Mm. But uh, I'm living in an utopian world. <laughs> that is lovely. That is lovely. I have a, in Chile a, a young colleague. Um, she's called Valeria Galvez, who has written a small book on what she calls um, educational clinics. Ah, hmm? very interesting. In which she addresses uh, this matter. And um, she tells of some cases yeah. and situations which are to be taken as, uh, as cases to, yeah. to reflect when they are told, but they, are, they, are, they have occurred. Yeah. In, the, in her uh, life as a teacher. And one of these cases is the following. She is teaching in a school, and this is a uh, primary level, these are children up to 12 or 13 years old. She teaches English. And this is supposed to be a, a group of, of students she has come to teach which are very unruling, they move around in the, in the class, they do not listen, and the, this is always very uncomfortable in the class yeah. because they're going from one side to another. Yeah. And uh, she realizes this and says, children, I do not like to be where I do not like to be. And so I imagine that you also do not like to be where you do not like to be. Now, I see that you move around so much that maybe you do not like to be sitting, seated where you are seated. Please sit whichever way you wish. So the children move around, and the moment comes in which they are, they are sitting, listening. Each one chose to sit here or there where he or she wanted to sit. 
And that changed the whole atmosphere yeah. such that uh, talking about whatever could begin. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the evoking of English, so exactly, to say, exactly, could begin exactly. by Very beautiful because this yeah. disposition was yeah. created. And uh, she uh, emphasizes that this is the central point, uh, to create this yeah. particular disposition mm -hmm. of relation. They are creating a universe in which they are feeling at home. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that this is one of the central things yeah, in education, yeah. which uh, yeah. frequently is uh, not yeah. taken into consideration. But this is an, a really genius, ingenious teacher. Yes. But unfortunately, in many cases, the teacher don't even understand the children. I had a case which absolutely deeply touched me. I visited people, uh, some of my friends. They had a little son who was going to school. We were for lunch. The son didn't come back, the little boy showed up only at three o'clock that they come home with tears in his eyes, completely crying, etc., etc. Parents said, oh, what is, what happened, why are you so late? Yeah, I had to stand in the corner uh, in the class for two hours, etc. Yeah, why did you have to do that? Yeah, the teacher said, I'm fresh, I was giving fresh answers. I said, what was the problem? And he said, the teacher asked me, what is two times three? And uh, what uh, the class, I raised my hand and said, what is it? And I said, it is three times two. The whole class laughed. The teacher said, I'm a fresh boy, put me in the corner. So I listened to that thing and says, but look, your answer was completely correct. Can you prove it? He says, of course. He took a sheet of paper, made th two rows of three dots. Yeah, one, two, three, one, two, three. And said, it's two times three. And then he turned it 90 degrees around, and this is three times two. This is seven years of age. Commutative law of multiplication, seen by this child without any other need for proving it. I think and the teacher did not understand that. Isn't it fascinating? She thought it was a fresh answer, and the kids were all laughing and thought this, this love uh, has given the teacher really a tough time. Yeah, but was a very fresh answer indeed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. most likely, yeah. Of course, and uh, yeah, yeah, of yeah, course we are playing say, with yeah. the meaning no, of the first These are the points which I find are yeah. so important. But this point is a central in, in the relation of the, of the teacher with the student in terms of the actual interpersonal relation, yeah, the yeah. listening, because this teacher did not listen to the no, answer of the child. Not, clearly, yeah, yeah, yeah. But in the case of this uh, young woman, Valeria Galvez, that yeah. uh, I have just, exactly. I have just mentioned, I, I she mentioned listened. Yeah, exactly. She listened. This is That's the difference. That's the point, yeah. She, and she listened to the emotion. There there were these children moving around, this yeah. not comfortable where they were, they wanted to be somewhere else. She exactly. opened the space yeah. because she listens to that, and then there they are seated, ready yeah. to whatever Absolutely now wonderful. will, will wonderful. come. Yeah. She understood. Uh, children must feel free. Yeah, and as you listen to them, then they are free. Yeah, exactly. If you do not listen to them, they are yeah. not free. Of course, yeah. And so this is another part, I think, of, of the theme of education, which in order for hap to happen, yeah. what you have just yeah. said yeah. a moment yeah. ago, this particular manner of relating must take place. The question is now, how does one learn to become a teacher? in that uh, universe you are proposing. Yeah. How does one learn to become a teacher? Or uh, one has to be feeling a call for becoming a teacher. Yeah, one has to teach teachers to listen. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And to listen to children and to listen to yeah, other people yeah. as well. But this is an entirely different problem in the principal and uh, Institute of Education for Teachers, yeah? Yes, it's an entirely different problem. It's absolutely different. And yeah. unless one addresses this one, yeah. of course, there is no chance of improving it. My feeling is that demand on teachers from this position is so much larger than the demand on teachers which I had right now. Yeah. Not only have to be listen to the children, they also have to know much more. Yes. Because the, the wits of proposals and ideas of notions which are presented by the children is so rich that only somebody who really knows a lot yeah. can incorporate them into the other uh, framework of, uh, let's say, 
classical ideas or standard ideas of mathematics or whatever you yeah. you are talking about. I think that this is a very general condition, isn't it? In order to speak with some seriousness about any particular subject, yeah. you must know much, much more than exactly. what you are going to yeah. talk about. Yeah. 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 So we are very wise kinds. Oh, how come? Because we, know we are we talking with more? such depth on <laughs> a little subject, we must, must know much, much more than yeah. the little subject we are exactly. talking about. But this is what we are faking here. <laughs> <laughs> We pretend, but we if pretend. we know that we are pretending, it's already a different state of affairs. Yes, yes. Now, the same teacher found herself shortly after this in the following situation. And she has written this, and this is published as yeah. Educational Clinics. An inspector came, yeah. opened the door, and saw that the children were not seated in the way they should be seated. Uh -huh. and he came in and said, what is happening here? Yeah. And all the children, of course, look at the teacher. Yeah. And she's a, a small woman. And she said, we are doing an experiment. And so the inspector said, OK, for today is, is OK, but tomorrow you must be seated in the proper places. Yeah. And went away. And of course, the children look at the teacher. Yeah. Saying, what are going, we going to yeah, do? Exactly, yeah, fantastic. So she said, well, we must be clever, we must be intelligent. We must invent a way which satisfies the inspector <laughs> and allows us to do what we want to do. Fabulous. So let us talk about it. And then they talk about it, and they decided that they would work in groups, uh -huh. cooperative work. So she said, well, arrange yourself in small group whichever way you wish. Again, move, tables move around, and they form little circles of about five, six students, which was much different than what yeah. was before, of course. And um, so she said, OK, now each one of you little groups will be a team. And one of you each day will report or talk with me about the difficulties that you may have in whatever tasks you are performing that we have designed initially or the day before. So. Each day, one of the students of each group yeah. would be the in charge, so to say, yeah. to report or to ask for what was difficult and then explain to the other students, whatever it is. OK, but next day comes the inspector oh. and says, what is happening here? And the children say, we are having teamwork, sir. Oh, very well. <laughs> this is very good. And he goes away. Yeah. Great. So she listened to the student, and she listened to the to inspector. The inspector, yeah. But that's not easy to make that bridge. No. But if you do it, yeah. then you are a very good teacher. Absolutely. <laughs> but as I say, these are demands, yeah. which are far beyond that what is demanded today from teachers. Unless but uh, I, I admire that woman. She's yeah. really remarkable. I yeah. like that very much. Yeah. So we established new education principles for the future educational, whatever, uh, systems. Yes. So this has okay. not been bad for the day. Yeah, Umberto, this was very, very interesting. I think the consequences of your basic idea, we are living a world which is not external and not independent from us, is, I think, has many, many deep consequences. Oh, I'm glad that you think so. Thank you. Mm -hmm.